Hello and welcome back to Let Pat Play, another episode of me just playing games, putting them on YouTube. Uh, I'm taking a look at Hearthstone once again. As I said in my last video, I'm just looking at some stuff before the next expansion, looking at the two decks I like most. Uh, this is Tespionage. Uh, we've got Tess uh, Gray Main here. We've got a lot of good, a lot of good cards. Tess is fantastic. Uh, we just remove Valera from there, which is fun. So I got to put Valera back in there. Tess Greymain, replace every card from another class you've played this game. How did we get cards from another class? Well, we're playing Academic Espionage, which shuffles 10 cards from your opponent's class into your deck that cost one. So the idea is you get a bunch of one-cost cards in your deck. You hopefully play this twice. You might even play it uh, a third time with Valera, and, uh, which allows you to do that. So maybe you're playing it three times. Generate a bunch of that, and then when you're out of options, you throw down Tess, you randomly target and randomly play in random order all of the uh, cards you played before. Hopefully you're putting a bunch of bodies on the board, maybe like 8-8s eight with Taunt, or 12-12s twelve that you can't target, uh, or, you know, something great, a bunch of Taunts, you know, things in the way, and you healed yourself a bunch, and you did a bunch of damage to things on the board, and... Uh, most likely to blow up in your face. Tess is great uh, in other test decks. Academic Espionage is great in some test decks. They're not always great together. And you also sometimes need to think about the cards you've played. Uh, otherwise, you might have a 3-5 on the board that does uh, damage your hero. I'm sorry, your spell power, um, your healing effects do damage instead. And suddenly, you've just killed yourself. Uh, there's Ziliax to keep you alive. There's Vile Spawn Slayer to help with board control. SI, 7 Agent, board control. Hench Glen Thug. Maybe do some face damage. Get a bunch of face damage in. I have won games with uh, Hench Glen Thug and Backstab and Eviscerate uh, and Sap and just done a bunch of damage. Elven Minstrel, either to draw minions out of your deck before you uh, play Espionage or to draw some of these one-cost minions. Uh, same thing with Gadgets and uh, Auctioneer. That's uh, you're trying to get some cards in there. And then Strider. Strider can win you a game. You play two Striders. You've got six 4-4s. Four you drop an Elven Minstrel on uh, the next turn. And not only did you draw two minions, you also drew a bunch of Spiders. You can win the game. Sprint for draw, obviously. Prep to either let you play your Academic Espionage early. The dream is to play it on turn one, which is great. Uh, or to make your sprint cost less, or even as a desperation move, it's a zero cost spell you can play uh, on turn seven or turn six, even to maybe just get a couple more spells that are that will be discounted to draw more from your deck. Those are that's kind of how the deck works. And then Valera is let you survive a turn uh, by giving you stealth, also giving you uh, armor to help you survive another turn, and then maybe let you copy some of your low-cost cards for their actual cost, because a one-cost card uh, doesn't cost one with Valyra's Hero Power. It will cost the actual price, but it should allow you to play two if it's not super expensive. So, you know, obviously you'd be able to play a one-cost Ultimate Infestation. You can't play a second Ultimate Infestation on the turn unless you have some way of, you know, Reducing the cost of that. I guess you could uh, prep your uh, one cost ultimate infestation and then play a 10 cost ultimate infestation. That's a way to do it. Okay, so we are living the dream. On turn one, we are playing academic espionage. We do not know where we'll go from there, but this is one of the combos we love the most about this. I say living the dream a lot when I talk about combos that you have in your head of like, oh, it'd be so cool if you could do this and you do it. So, you already have heard me say that a bunch in my last video. You've heard a bunch here. So, turn two, we can always just coin. Maybe we will draw a, uh, maybe we'll get a Death Knight. Oh, also, if you play Tess and you've played a Death Knight or Daraxis, which changes your class, you'll then play your rogue cards. Um, 
That's just something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, this is a 3-6 with taunt. It is not a, a demon. Uh, at the very least, it is giving us cards we can play later. And we'll have some more presents. So, yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, that sucks because that card uh, was uh, draw three cards at the end of the turn, discard them. Well, Sol Solarium could have drawn us a bunch of one-cost cards, and later we could have played it. Uh, we are going to go face, get some damage in with our 3-6. Um, I am glad that we did not lose our other academic espionage or Tess. You know, there's probably, oh, there's Tess right there, speaking of Tess. There's probably a bunch of bullshit in here uh, the, of the eight other cards we have. Um, so, we're just going to do this. Not a great turn, clearly. Um, would have liked to have, uh, next turn, if we have a one cost card, we can use our Elven Minstrel. Uh, we also, if it's a zero cost, can use Vile Spine, although there's nothing in this board I want to Vile Spine. I think we're probably going to clear just because now our opponent's drawing things, so we might want to clear the board this next turn. What do we got here? All right, life steal. Okay. Yep. So that might have been a good reason to last turn. Um. So we've got summon some do and put in your hands. Uh, that's that's a lot of cost here. I think we are going to use our backstab here. Uh, it is not mana efficient, but we might get a one-cost minion. We did not. At the very least, these are out of our deck. We can pull something else there. We can play a Strider next turn. All right. Uh, we can at least clear this if we want. Uh, we could play Auctioneer and then Prep. We can Prep Seal. I, I kind of like Prepping Seal. It's not the most efficient thing in the world. We're going to take four. So now, in our later card generation, which will come soon uh, when we play some spells, we can pull some uh, our 4-4 our four, four spiders in our spider ambush. As you note, it included the spider ambush. It did not include... Uh, any indication about our other cards. So you kind of have to do the math yourself about how many you have left. Um, let's see. I don't want to wait till turn nine to play that together. Um, can't really play these two together. I don't have a lot of good options here. This is unfortunately our best play. Gives us another 4-4. Four, four. There's a lot of... Honestly, we could have played this. Got a 3-3 three, three on the board. And then just attacked face. But I think the development is better. We can always do this on turn 9. If we get another prep. Do that. That sucks, obviously. Um, you don't like to see that. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Let's just do this. Put some stats on the board. It's not the best play by any means, but it put some stats on the board. Okay. That's then you got to play that, so good for you. All right, let's just uh, do some damage there. Draw a card. Um, next turn, this is this is a one cost Hellfire is pretty great, especially if my board has been rocked. Uh, I think we just want to get rid of this. We'll leave a one three on the board. But also, this is a good card generator. It obviously hurts my Gadgetan Auctioneer, so I don't love that. Zilliax is always a great card to have in there. Do a little healing. And then, yeah, my Auctioneer. Wait. What else do you have? 
Oh, hell. Oh, defile. Okay. I was like, hellfire? No, defile. Okay. Yeah. I was setting up a defile board there. I didn't even realize I was. All right. So, uh, let's just play two seals here. And then it's pretty good. Pretty good turn. We got seven, seven stats on the board. We don't love to see that. We also don't have our, um, uh, we don't, yeah, we don't, we, this is not great. All right. So let's see here. So that's seven. We can clear with that. And then we get hellfire. We lose our four, one. But I think that's the way to go here. Do that first. Do that. Do that. And then we will Hellfire. And we will play 5-5. Five, five. And then we get a 6-6 uh, a six, six next turn if we want. We could do some. We're just going to go face. Coin. Zilliax I'd rather use later. And then also getting rid of those one threes means that uh, Gul'dan, you know, like more demons that gets played. Okay, the other Void Lord, that sucks. Uh, okay. So next turn, we are destroying our opponent's deck. And we are hoping that our opponent has not pulled out Gul'dan, which would be great. If we can destroy Gul'dan, that would be awesome. Also, playing a 10-10 seems pretty good, especially... Oh, Sprint? Okay, that sucks. But if we play Tess... Oh, fuck you! Holy shit. Uh, I'm not really one to emote, but... Now, our opponent did lose Duraxis, which is not great for them. But, and also got the worst demon. But that fucking sucks. Hey, spider. Hey, Hedgeclan thug. Ah, uh, you hate to see that. We do not want to discard a random card because uh, we could lose Tess and that would suck ass. Oh, man. You hate to see that. Uh, we're going to do that to heal and keep this going. Do that. And we're going to go face. We're going to hit for six. We have a great board, right? We still have a great board. We still have Tess. We still have Tess that can do some pretty cool things. We still have Valera. We still have another academic espionage. Um... There are many, many options here. Our opponent is at 10. Uh, it sucks that we did not get to destroy our opponent's deck. Um, but also, I'm very happy that our opponent does not have Jaraxxus. They cannot do some face damage to themselves and then pull in Jaraxxus. That rules. Okay. Another Defile. It's a really good defile. That's some smart math. Our opponent, Max, did some really smart math there. Up to 14, but we're still at 26. As I said, we are not getting... We're, um, Tess might be fun here, but I'd rather fan and even sprint. Um, obviously, because that's going to give us options here. We do not want to sap that. Let's sprint. Great. Nosferatu is great. That, okay, that's good. This is also post Tess. This is a great card to play. It's a one cost 3 8. I'll take it. Oh, you, okay. Okay, got the Gul'dan. All right. Um, that's a board there. All right, so. Do I want to sap a 3-9? Do I want a Nosferatu? 
do I want to sap and then play Tess? Kind of like that. Let's sap that. Make you have to play it. Uh, and then let's play Tess. We've got some options. We can always act an epic espionage later. I kind of like playing Tess now. We are going to fill our hands with bullshit. Um, I'll say this. Would have liked to have seen that Hellfire come down earlier so I didn't damage stuff on my board. Uh, we are going to lose one of our cards here. We do can still destroy our opponent's deck. Uh, next turn and uh, have them lose their last six cards which is pretty great so I still think we're going to do that oh yep great your void lord is dead your void lord is gone shadow flame okay that could have been good let's just play a 10-10 get rid of your deck there And, all right, conceded there. They had no way to deal with my 10-10. Also lost their Void Lord, so. There were some misplays in there. I might have wanted to have more of an empty hand when I played Test because it was going to do all of that uh, Rin stuff. But at the end of the day, we won. So we'll count ourselves lucky. And we even got our gold Swamp Boos. And I played... Uh, I needed one more card. Uh, the test I played there got me some uh, some gold for uh, buying decks in our expansion. Uh, all right, let's play another game. Um, why not, right? Oh, that was a long one. Now, that's what I should say. Tespionage is a long game. Um, espionage is obviously the most important part of this deck. I'll say that. Tess certainly great in this game test was huge right there are other cards you can play that aren't test um there is the one that every time you play a card uh, your card goes into your deck you do a copy of it alec that is great for uh academic espionage and strider okay we are playing uh, another warlock here we're playing the i don't know if we're playing the same one i don't actually feel like looking it up we don't want any of these cards um, so this deck, the only really uh, legendary you need for this deck is, because there are three legendaries, Valera is great, Tess is fun, Zilliax is your lifesteal with Rush, Zilliax is important. Zilliax should be in just about every deck, honestly. It is the best card in Boomsday Project, um, and I would, yeah, I would craft it if you don't have it. I would craft it immediately. So, we could coin sap, which feels shitty. I, but I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to coin sap. I don't think we played Scrumble. I think our last opponent was had a different name. Are you going to... Oh, okay. Soul Infusion. Okay. That's a big void walker. Um, we know that this void walker is going to do damage. We're most likely going to fanonize next turn just to get some draw going. Um, that sap was probably poorly timed. We could have sapped this. All right, you did some healing, and you're going to play Happy Ghoul. Yeah, this is a different deck. This is a different opponent, obviously. Um, I hate this deck. Um, if we had gotten prep academic espionage, I think I would have also lost. We are most likely going to uh, concede here. Okay, Keliseth, that's awful. You're going to play that Flame Imp that I... Yep, gave you back. Yeah. I mean, we're losing this game. 
We don't have the tools to win this game. Um, we can do some damage here. We can do this. We can do this. I mean, we live, if we get the other backstab, we can backstab something new and then vile spine something else. Um, if we get Zilliax, we can get rid of a 3-2, have some healing. Um, I'm happy Doubling Imp isn't bigger because it's Keliseth, but yeah, we're not, we're not winning this game. Let's do it anyway. Forget it. Let's do it. Um... Because we still live here. Our opponent just needs to hit Hellfire and we lose. Or, well, okay, Soulfire too, yeah. I mean, Hellfire was easy to see that that was maybe coming. Yeah, we lost that. Look at that. Look at us. L just getting stomped on. And there were ways, you know, draws we could have gotten that would have kept us alive longer. And then maybe we get some armor or get some lifesteal demons. You know, ugh. But anyway, that's the highs and lows of playing Tespionage. That felt bad. But also, there are a lot of other decks that were going to lose against that deck as well. Because if that deck can heal itself and then play a free 3-3... Three, three, well, it just healed itself and played a free 3-3. Three, three. So, it's tough. It's it's definitely tough to for that deck. But, yeah. Uh, those are the highs and lows. Um, thank you for watching. Um, very soon, there will be another expansion. And maybe Tespionos will change. Maybe we'll be a couple cards that make it work. Maybe my Hunter deck that I played in the last video. Well, Quest Hunter will feel different. I don't know. But, I'm going to be playing both these decks for a while. Um until, you know, probably April when I can't play these decks anymore because they will go into wild. Uh, the key components of the decks will no longer be there. I mean, maybe maybe there's a way to play espionage for a while longer, probably, but obviously the quest can't do that in April. Anyway, thanks so much. I'm rambling now. Bye bye Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, all that. Um, thank you. Goodbye.